latest installment of Bergeron Briefs. If you haven't been seen the show before, my name is Arthur Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, there are 60 of us, 40 in uh, Worcester and 20 in Westboro. I do elder law. Um, and I started doing these shows several years ago to kind of supplement the presentations that I do at the Senior Center, which are mostly about law. And the point of these presentations is really to have you know the people who are the people that you want to know as a senior. And one of those people that you need to know is Kelly Trainer, And Kelly is kind enough to join us today. Thank you very much, Kelly, for coming. Of course. And Kelly, you work for? I work for the Hudson Board of Health. I'm the sanitarian there. The, you're the Board of Health. You're yep. the sanitarian now. Mm -hmm. Working for, is it Sam? Sam, Sam Wong, yep. He's Sam our director. Wong. Yep. And, and I know that one of the reasons I wanted you to come on is because you're also the co-chair of the, the this Dementia Friendly Communities Initiative here in Hudson. Right? Yep, it's called Come to Be uh, Dementia Friendly. Come to Be Dementia Friendly. Yep. And I want to talk about that, but first, and for folks, you're, you're not a townie, so nope. I want you to kind of introduce yourself. So who are you? Where do you come from? Why are you here? I grew up in Littleton, Massachusetts. Yeah, up and, the road. Yep, not right up far. the road, yeah. not too, too far. Yeah. Uh, I went to Worcester State uh, for nursing originally, but I decided once I started working at UMass Memorial that nursing just wasn't my thing. Um, well, so you I, started a big place. Yeah. Nursing, right? <laughs> yeah. So I went back to school for health education. I get it. And then I interned at the Board of Health in Webster, and yeah. that kind of spiraled into the Board of Health in Hudson. Oh. Oh, I see. So it was really a, it was an educational slice on Board of Health work. Yeah. Right? Yep. And so now you're at the Board of Health in Hudson, and there's just you and Sam, right? So Sam and I for environmental, but we have, I think, six people in our Board of Health total. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. So, so can you just kind of describe, you know, before we talk about dementia, like describe what you do. Like, what, else, what as sanitarian, what does that mean? As a sanitarian, I take in complaints from um, residents in the community that yeah. complain about neighbors' trash, about um, if they're renters, they can complain about the living conditions that they live in. Oh, wow. You're the um, person who listens to all of that. I listen to complaints. Wow. And, and you um, go out and do the checks also? Yep. You do, you do yep. investigations? Yeah, we do the investigations, and then if we find violations, we send out um, a violation letter and try and get the issue resolved. I see. So that looks high. You don't look like a person that just would love that kind of high stress, right? That's very high stress. Yeah, I take stress on easily. <laughs> right. So now, so how did you end up getting involved in this, this whole dementia friendly initiative? Um, I actually have always been a big supporter of dementia. Uh, we, I've had family members with dementia. I was, I was just say I've you had, had you had family members that have had the, had yeah. the issue. Yeah. And currently, I take care of an elder woman who has dementia. And she's way past the point of early dementia, yeah. so it's kind of hard going places and seeing the way people treat her, and it just makes you want to get involved and kind of take on the situation. And so, and now I'm curious, how did you get involved with that person? How did you know? Was this a, was this a mm -hmm. is this a, like a, like a, a job or is it a family friend? How did you how do you know? How did you? Because a lot of yeah. the care that gets given, as you know, is care by family mm -hmm. members or you know kind of random people. It isn't right, real official. Right. Right. Um, my mom is actually a nurse. She's a home nurse, home visiting nurse yeah. um, for like her like part-time like job. Yeah, yeah, sort of, but she does her own consulting. Yeah. So as her daughter, I just kind of tag along to all these jobs. Yeah. And she was just, this woman, uh, she was just one of the jobs I just fell in love with. She's a sweetheart and you can't help but want to help her. And now is she still living at home? She's, she lives at home. Um, unfortunately, her um, son-in-law just died, so she's been living with us for like four days out of the week. Wow. Yeah, it's a, a huge responsibility, but... That's a lot. But it, but it gives you, a, you kind do, of a, yeah. a first-hand sense of what, ha of what right, goes on, right? right? Mm -hmm. And kind of some of the, or a lot of the embarrassment around Right, Alzheimer's you see everything, yeah. Right. Yep. So, you got involved. Yeah. Okay, so tell us a little bit about, it's, it's called Come to Be Dementia Friendly? Yep. So Come to Be Dementia Friendly is based off um, an initiative that was started um, called Act on Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of taking it over here in Hudson along with two other communities. And we're trying to kind of bring dementia to light 
and kind of explain dementia to people, like see what the community knows about dementia, um, and just trying to make it quote unquote dementia friendly. Dementia friendly, yeah. Um, and so. I mean, it's a lot of different things. Right now, we're just in the grassroots. We're just kind of doing surveys right now. We're seeing what the community knows, what the community wants to know, what, and, and, and what our issues and strengths are. And you're part of a kind of a larger team of people, right? Kind yeah. Of a, yep. Like um, an action team that's doing this kind of stuff. Yep. So we have an action team, and then we have a survey team. Mm -hmm. um, our, our action team actually has not met that many times mm -hmm. um, in the most recent weeks because it's mostly in the stages of the survey people who are our grassroots, who are going to give us the information we need to know. And you're talking about surveys. So, so kind of two questions. First yep. of all, who, who are you targeting to, you know, as the people that you're surveying? And then secondly, so what is, what, is, what is contained in the survey and how does it work? So is this like an online thing? Is this a, per, a personal thing? And who are you trying to target? What are you trying to learn through these surveys? Okay. Um, so we have a team of about 25 surveyors, mm -hmm. um, maybe a little bit more, and That's maybe a little terrific. less. Yeah. yeah, we have a big team, um, and so they're individuals. And, and by the way, I should say, so I'm the chairman of this in Marlboro, and so yeah. I'm very envious. Yeah. The other two towns are Marlboro and Northboro, and we're both watching us and going, this is unbelievable, right? Because yeah. of such enthusiasm. We have such us. a strong community, and it's great to see them all come to life. And that's in why. this project. And that's why. You have a, yeah. a great COA director, mm -hmm. Council Asian Director, Janice yeah, Long. Yeah, Janice Long is great. great. Yeah. So you've got a lot of people. And, yeah. you, and, and so who are you trying to serve at? And I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, you're fine. It's um, like just the Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> so we are um, interviewing many different people, businesses, government officials like myself. Um, we're doing the health care. We're doing everything that ever you thought of like banks. Um, we're trying to get anybody who would ever come in contact with an elder person who has dementia. So so it's really, mm -hmm. from the flip side, if I've got dementia and I want to be staying in the community, you're really going to be trying to talk to everybody that I might right. be dealing yep. with to see to see what, what you know right. Right. about my problem, about my dementia problem. Exactly. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. And so our individual surveyors go out and they individually do the surveys one on one with um, business owners, with these people that we're trying to survey I to see. get the answers at hand. And, and how did you generate the surveys themselves? The surveys were actually modeled very, very closely off of the Act on Alzheimer's um, initiative that was in Minnesota. So we actually just kind of took their surveys because we've seen that it was supportive and so successful in the past that we kind of wanted to model our surveys very very similar after yep. theirs so we're kind of using those that's great yeah so you're not having to try to cook up these surveys yourself right yeah so you're really kind of getting so and you're surveying all these different sectors in the, in yep. the community and so do you have a target date by which you want to get all that work completed we in case anybody gets a call from somebody that i know want to get surveyed right we, right now, we don't have a timeline on yeah. the amount of surveys and when we want to do it right now. Um, we just passed out the surveys two weeks ago to yeah. our surveyors, and we've already gotten 35 back. So we're hoping for a lot more. Um, you've already gotten 35? You've already gotten 35 You've already gotten 35 completed surveys yeah. back? Yeah, so they're pretty active, our surveyor. They're great. They've yeah. been really good. Yeah. Um, so it's just a matter of how long we're going to do it, we don't know yet. I think just when we feel we have the right number is when we have it. I see. And once the surveys are back, then what, hap what is going to happen then? We are going to have our action team analyze the surveys and kind of find out where our strengths and weaknesses are in Hudson mm -hmm. um, and focus more on the weaknesses, obviously, and try and use those weaknesses to turn Hudson into a dementia-friendly community. And, and 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 that I would guess that that's going to happen maybe sometime in the fall. So it, it, it isn't yeah. going to happen next week. Oh, it's week. not going to happen anytime soon. Because it's a lot of work. It's, such a, it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of planning, and it's a lot of education that you have to deliver to people. So yeah. it's not in, it's something that's going to happen overnight. And, and you mentioned to me you have a co-chair here in um, in Hudson. Yep, um, Cindy Cormier. She works for Bay Path. She's yeah. our co-chair. She kind of runs the show, and I'm kind of in the back. Well, that's not what she says. Just said. kidding. That's not what she says. 
That's right. Although I so. know, you know, I, I know Cindy, and, and I know mm -hmm. that you know she also has some some family issues, so she's very familiar again with people with folks with Alzheimer's. Right. That, I think it's one of the one of the interesting things about what you're doing is you you start talking to people about whether they're willing to participate, and inevitably yeah. they know somebody who has. You know, it's yeah. a family member or a friend or somebody who's gone through this, but they were all right. kind of too embarrassed to say anything. Right, right. it's so hard because, I mean, pretty much everybody's known somebody or seen somebody that has dementia. And one out of nine people over 65 have dementia, and one out of three over 85 have dementia. So it's, I mean, that's a striking it's statistic. so, it's everywhere. It's, so that's what we're trying to attack. So when, I, I know I've heard the term, obviously, that I've heard the term dementia-friendly community. Mm -hmm. what, from your perspective and, and, and after your experience actually dealing with somebody with dementia, right, how, how do you imagine a community looking that is dementia-friendly? And by the way, when I, as I, I told you before we started the show, it's easy for me to figure out what the, def, you know, to me the definition because, so my mother died in a nursing home and my older brother's got an early stage diagnosis. So I feel like it's coming. So I feel like this is really about me. I'm yeah. really taking care of me. And I always imagine dementia friendly community as being a place where I can grow old and die, no right. matter how confused they are, right? But, right. but so how, what, what do you imagine? What aspects of the community do you imagine you know, changing or, or how do you imagine a dementia community, friendly community? So I'm not sure if it, a dementia friendly community would look any different. Um, mm -hmm. It would feel a lot different. Uh, you would feel more comfortable going, taking your mother to a restaurant because you know that the staff is going to treat her with respect and talk to her instead of you and not treat her like a five year old child and be able to have that respect and that security going to a restaurant. Um, as a health educator, I think the most important part is education. I think that our community is undereducated in dementia, and so I think education is a huge um, milestone that mm -hmm. we have to pass. And, and, and that would talk, bring us. When you talk us about education, what 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 is what would that mean for and, and and how would it be different, say, for a restaurant person or a banker or a public employee or a spouse? You know, right. It might not be that much different because mm -hmm. um, if you're going to act like interact with um, a patient or an individual with dementia, you're going to be acting in the same way as you would if you were a bank teller or if you were a um, waiter at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. We're just going to educate. I feel what we need to do is educate what dementia is, how to recognize the signs of dementia, how to interact with people with dementia so that they feel comfortable and their caregivers feel comfortable right. going um, places. So it would be, I think education is just huge. So. Right. And I suppose across a whole bunch of different, yeah. a whole bunch of different people. Oh, everywhere. Everybody needs it. I could use more education. And I'm the health educator. Like, I could use a lot more education. Every education's endless. So there's always, even if you think you know a lot about dementia, you don't. Right, but I suppose no. once once enough people are talking about it mm -hmm. and kind of come out of the closet, yes, my mom's got a right. problem, yes, I've got a problem, it also makes it easier for everybody else. Right. Because then they're feeling like it's not this embarrassment. Right, right? and dementia is not embarrassing. Um, it may feel like it is, but once we have communities that know what dementia is and they know that it's, a health issue and not an embarrassing thing that's happening. Right. And a these families, yes. yeah, these families, these individuals, they're going to just feel a lot more comfortable in the community that they're in. I think that's a, I think that's a great summary. It's a great summary. Um, so thank you. Of course. Uh, so if you've got uh, questions about it, ah, so I realize, if, <laughs> so if folks want to be coming to be dementia friendly, they yes. brought, she even brought in a document. I did. Uh, if, if they want to be come to be, if they want to be involved in this, if they want to be maybe participating in doing surveys or helping you, what do they do? They can um, contact me at mm -hmm. the Board of Health, or they can contact Janice at the Senior Center. You want, you want to give a phone number um, or an email address? Sure. My phone number is nine seven eight five six eight nine six five four. And um, Janice says I don't know her, but, but, but they you can contact, can the, senior contact the Senior Center and you'll find Janice. And you'll find Janice or you'll find Kelly. Yeah. And if you want to learn um, 
a lot about this and you're really interesting, really interested, the, the website to look at is called Act on Alts, A C T O N A L Z dot org, Act on Alts dot org. That is the Minnesota website where you can see what a state has done over the last seven years in getting almost 40 communities now to have developed and implemented these individual dementia friendly communities plans. It's really something. I just want to mention one other thing. Um, as far as Massachusetts is concerned, uh, there was just a statewide conference regarding how to have um, all communities have this available then to them to do dementia friendly communities. And one of the speakers was this woman, this woman named Christine Alessandro, who she, I've interviewed her here before. She actually is the director of Bay Path Elder Services. We are in the Bay Path area. She spoke because these three communities are considered to be the cutting edge in Massachusetts. Afterwards, we spoke to the woman from Minnesota who had developed the Minnesota program. She's now running the national program, and she says that nationally, Massachusetts is on the cutting edge of what is, of what is happening. So we really have the opportunity. And by the way, as far as Marlboro and Northboro are concerned, Hudson is the leading community. So somebody really, has to do it. <laughs> you really have the opportunity here to have an influence both here and at the state level and even nationally in mm -hmm. terms of really encouraging people to make this a national movement. Right. So thank you very much. Of course. It's really special having you on. Thank you I for really having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. If you're interested, talk to her. She's really a nice person. Okay. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you to seeing you on the next installment of Bridgeron Briefs. Thank you.